This is a quick video to show the power of Microsoft Fabric as a data platform. If you see my screen, this is what we go we are going to implement in Microsoft Fabric. We'll be using a data lake house and I've got an Excel file that I will be uploading into the lake house as a file and then I'll convert that file into a table and use that delta table uh, via the SQL endpoint to create a Microsoft Power BI report. So this will be the flow. First, I will upload that file into the lake house as a file and then create a data pipeline to convert or to load that as a table in my lake house. Once done, I will use uh, the SQL endpoint to, uh, as a data source and create my report. This is my fabric workspace. I've got three workspaces, one for dev, one for UAT, one for prod for the data engineering. And this is my data lake house for the bronze layer. I will upload my file in my data lake house. The file contains financial data and that's what we will be using to create our report. That's a sample data available on Google. So I just downloaded that and that's what I'm using. So file is uploaded and the preview is not available because it's not a supported file format. These are the supported file formats. And the preview is not available for this. If you look at the properties after upload, you can see the name of the file the URL, the relative path, and the ABS, ABFS path. ABFS path can be useful if you are using notebooks. For this quick short video, we will just be creating a data pipeline. Let's head back to our workspace and create a data pipeline. So in Data Factory, we will create a data pipeline and call it PPL finance data copy or uh, yeah finance data load bronze so this will load that excel sheet into the data lake house table these are the options you can start with a blank canvas but for this we will use the copy data assistant You have the new sources, but in our case, we just need to use the one lake data hub. This is our SQL endpoint, but we need the data lake house. Once selected, we'll select the files. It should show us the file that we just uploaded. It takes it its own sweet time but it's worth the wait you can see the folder finance that i had created if i click on it i should be able to see the excel sheet that's my excel file you can see it has already uh, populated the file format i'll select the sheet one and i can have a preview of my data I'll select first row as header. I'm satisfied. Uh, the data looks good. I can see all the uh, column names. And yeah, that should be good. Let's click next. Choose data destination. Again, it will be the same, but as a table. So we'll load to new table. We'll create a table for this one. We will not be using an existing table. Let's name it financial data. You can see the column mappings is available. If you don't want, you can reset it and import schema again. Once you are satisfied, in this case, I want to change some 
data types. I'll change the data type for the prices, the quantities, the discount, sales, profit, and date. Also, I would like the month number as an integer. So, yeah, that should be good. Let's move on to next. Save and run. I know this will fail, but I'll sh I just wanted to, you know, go ahead with this and show you how to fix the error and what the error exactly is. It is currently queued and running. In a couple of seconds, it should fail. And once it fails, we will see the error and fix the error. So this is the error and it says the column name contains invalid characters. So if you will, we will go back to our copy activity, go back to mapping. And it said the discount band column name had an invalid character. So there is a space which it doesn't like. So I will remove all the spaces and substitute it with an underscore. Do that. The sales, if you see there was a space. I'll remove that and the month number and month name. Yeah, now it should be all good. Let me save this and run it quickly. This time we should get a successful run and should load the Excel sheet data as a new table in our lake house. It will take a couple of minutes. And that's successful. Our data load has completed successfully. And if we see the logs, you can see there were 700 rows that was written. All is well. Now we can go ahead and just verify. Let me go back to my data engineering dev workspace. Let's go to bronze, our bronze lake house. Those are the files. We want to see if the table has been populated. So let's go to the table section. Let me quickly refresh the page. As you can see, the financial data is available as a table. It's a delta table. I can see the data. Let me switch to the SQL endpoint. So we can write some SQL queries. Okay, we can see now we are connected to the SQL endpoint. And you can see in the DBO schema, there is a table, financial data. You can have a preview. Let's do a query, select top 100. And you can now write your queries. So I would like to see the data for Mexico. So where country is equals to Mexico. I'll run it and it will fail. Why it fails is because this is case sensitive and our country has a capital C. Let me change that. Now it should work fine. As you can see, we were able to query the table just like any other table. 
so it all works fine now we will use this sql endpoint connection string to connect from our power bi desktop this is the report which i've already created all we need to do is go to our power bi go to one lake hub go to our data lake house instead of connect we will use the sql endpoint there are two options the first option is for a live connection the second one is to create a, a connection using the sql endpoint in that you will have the option for import as well this is the table load uh, import uh, import is fine for now we will not be using direct query this is all done we can see uh, the data has made its way through we can see the data i will just quickly configure or i say reconfigure this report this is a slicer on the left for ear and this visual is for profit by month let's do it profit by month that looks good and this chart is again for profit but by country that is done and the last visual is for our sales per by product and by segment so that's yeah so that's it so the report is fine uh, yeah it, it was a report that i already created so i had just had to reconfigure it using the sql endpoint the data is available i can do the data refreshes everything is working fine let me quickly save and publish it i'll publish this to my power bi reporting dev so i'm trying to isolate my power bi developers and my data engineers this is a pattern that i like and i would like you to try it out now that the report has been published let's go back to power bi and if you see it has just refreshed let's go to settings if you see the data gateway it is using a connection and that connection we have already created in our previous video so we are just using that if you want to know about it you can look at the last video that we have uploaded on creating a connection to the data lake house let's go back to our report and do a quick refresh so this is the data data set that we want to refresh as you can see the refresh has completed successfully if you see it is coming from our data lake house so it shows upstream as the data lake house and downstream are uh, you know downstream item is the financial report if you see the refresh history we this is the last refresh that we just did and that's it we have completed the short project on microsoft fabric we loaded the data we moved it into a table and use that to create a report you can go ahead and do more cleaning you can move it to silver and gold as you like it 
to you know follow the medallion architecture but uh, in this case the data was already cleaned and prepped so i did not need to do that i could have directly moved it into gold but yeah so that that's a very quick video on microsoft fabric as a data platform i hope you liked it and yeah please do subscribe and help me out thanks for watching and keep supporting